Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see about the amalgam versus the composite in terms of tooth preparation because this is a very commonly asked question in your exams and even they ask you this in the VIVAs. So starting with the first difference that is in the outline form. So now in amalgam, it includes all the pits and fissure and the adjacent suspicious area. Whereas in composite, it includes only the falls, but you do not have to extend the tooth preparation to the adjacent pits and fissure. Now, for example, now this is the caries over here. So when you do a tooth preparation in amalgam, then you know that we have to follow that outline form. So it should be like you're following this complete outline form in the case of amalgam. Whereas over here now in composites, you can see this is the caries. So in this, you'll just remove this part and then we'll do the restoration. Over here now, you can see you have to completely fill this much. So you are preparing. So the preparation is comparatively extensive in case of amalgam. For a class 2 tooth preparation, the proximal contact, it has to be broken. Now this is the proximal contact. So that means that your tooth contact between two teeth. So that is your proximal contact. Now in class 2 where the caries is involving the proximal wall. So in that case, you have to break this proximal wall. Over here now in composites, now for class 2 preparation, proximal contact they need it not to be broken in all the cases so this is the first difference in the outline form now in amalgam as we are doing the amalgam restoration in our final years even in the exam so we should know like what are the fundamentals for the tooth preparation so now we know in amalgam we have outline form resistance form retention form convenience form so there are like various steps that we have to follow whereas in composites you should always remember that composite it depends on the principle of drill and fill so it's like you're just drilling whatever that area is and then you're filling it with the composite now the next difference is in the pulpal depth so now what is pulpal wall so pulpal wall is the one which is perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth so this is your pulpal wall over here now this is the long axis of your tooth so over here now this pulpal wall it is perpendicular to the long axis of the teeth so it should be maintained uniform in the case of amalgam. Now over here, this pulpal wall, it should be completely uniformed. Whereas in composite, it can be non-uniform. So basically composite is just you have to remove whatever the caries is and then you have to fill it. And in pulpal depth, for amalgam, the depth is 1.5 mm minimum. Now because 1.5 mm, so this depth over here, so this depth, it should be 1.5 mm in the case of amalgam. These all factors, they are for the resistance form. In that, so the pulpal floor, it should be flat because to resist the forces which are directed along the long axis of the tooth and to provide strong stable seat for the restoration. So because of that, you need your pulpal depth has to be uniform. And now why do you need the depth to be 1.5 mm? It is to result in adequate thickness of the restoration, providing the resistance to fracture and wear. So that now you're filling it with the amalgam. So your amalgam, it shouldn't fracture or it shouldn't wear out. And because of that, you require this 1.5 mm. Now, because your amalgam, they do not adhere to the tooth micromechanically. Whereas composite, now we know in composite, we are doing the etching. We are applying the dentin bonding agent. So in that, we are etching the tooth. So in that, what we are doing is we are creating those micro tags. So because of that, there is bonding of the composite to the teeth. Oh, now over here, in this composite, it should not be uniform and the depth is 1 to 2 mm usually. It is not like you require particularly this 1.5 mm like you require it for the amalgam. Now, how do you know how to like calculate or how you have attained that 1.5 mm? Now, the burr which you are using is usually a 245 number burr. The length of this burr, it is 3 mm. So, when you are doing the tooth preparation, you will see that half of your burr, it should be inside the tooth preparation. So, that means you have got this 1.5 mm that is the minimum pulpal depth now the next difference is in the axial depth so now what is axial depth so it is in the case of class 2 now over here this is your axial wall so axial wall is the one which is parallel to the long axis of the tooth so this is the long axis of the tooth so now this axial wall it is parallel to the long axis of the tooth so now in this the axial depth it should be uniform again in amalgam it should be uniform and the depth it should be 0.2 to 0.5 mm inside the dentino enamel junction so over here now it is it is not necessary that it should be uniform all the time and the depth is 
according to the extent of the defect like how much the defect is you are extending your axial depth till that much only the next is the cavo surface margin now what is cavo surface margin so it is the angle of the tooth structure which is formed by the junction of the prepared wall and the external surface of the tooth so this is your external surface of the tooth and this is the tooth preparation which you have done so the angle between this two is nothing but your cavo surface margin so in amalgam it is 90 degree whereas in composite it is equal to or it is more than 90 degree at the margin so this is the next difference now the next difference is the nature of the prepared wall so in this it is smooth as we are keeping all the walls and everything uniform so because of that the prepared walls they are smooth whereas over here we are preparing or we are just removing whatever the caries is and because of that it is rough now the next difference is bevels so what are bevels so they are the flexible extension of the cavity preparation which is allowing the inclusion of the surface defect so it is nothing but if there's a defect which is present so in bevel what you do beveling is nothing but you are extending your preparation and you are involving this defect which is like surface defect or a supplemental groove or the other areas on the tooth surface so this is nothing but bevels so in the case of amalgam they are not indicated except the gingival bevel which you are giving in the case of class 2 So in this, the bevels are indicated for the large preparation for the case of aesthetics and for the seal. So get, to get that proper seal aesthetics, you require the bevels in the case of composite restoration. Now the next difference is in the primary retention form. Now the primary retention form is the occlusal convergence that you give in the preparation. So this is nothing but the occlusal convergence. So this occlusal convergence is for the retention of your amalgam. Now you are filling this with the amalgam. Now over here, now you can see it is converged. so because of that your amalgam it will get properly into this walls over this corner sides and because of that it will retain itself in the preparation so that it is not coming out of the cavity so this is the occlusal convergence so your 245 number burr it is convergent only so because of that burr you can get this occlusal convergence in your preparation and the other retention form is giving this dovetails so it is just involving your triangular fossa so this is your dovetail now over here you do not require any retention form because now the bonding property and the roughness because of the preparation so roughness is basically now you are doing the etching of the surface so because of that it is getting roughened so bonding is again the dentin bonding you are applying the bonding agents and there is the formation of micro tags so this is like there is formation of micro tags so then your composite material it will go into this micro tags and it will adhere to the tooth surface so because of that only you don't require any such convergence form or anything in the composites because your bonding agent are doing that work now the next difference is the second retention form so now in amalgam you require grooves slots pens now what exactly these are i'm going to explain in the fundamentals of tooth preparation for the amalgam itself and over here again it is bonding and grooves they are given for a very large preparation or if it is a root surface preparation so this is the next difference the next difference is in the resistance form so resistance form is to resist the forces which are directed along the long axis of the tooth and to provide a stable seat for the restoration so that is nothing but your resistance form retention is you are retaining the amalgam into the preparation which you have done and resistance is you are resisting the forces so that your amalgam isn't like fracture or weared off because of the forces so that is nothing but resistance form so in the resistance form for amalgam you have to do that box preparation so now over here you can see this is the box preparation which you do for the amalgam whereas over here it is prepared conservatively so this is the resistance form that is the primary resistance form for your amalgam that you are doing the box preparation and the next resistance form for your amalgam is the flat pulpal and the gingival float and the depth which is 1.5 mm so these are the resistance form for your amalgam now over here you do not require the resistance form for small to moderate preparations now this is the same thing like you are preparing the cavity conservatively now over here this is the box preparation which you do for the amalgam the cutting instrument for amalgam they are the burrs over here it is burrs or diamonds now about the base and the liner indication so over here if the difference between the pulp and the amalgam so this is your pulp and this is the cavity preparation which you have done so if the difference is 
टू एम एम सो इन दैट केस यू आर इंडिकेटिंग अ बेस द बेस विच इज कॉमनली यूज इज अ जिंक फॉस्फेट एंड द लाइनर इज बेसिकली वेन द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द पल्प सो द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन द पल्प एंड योर प्रेशन इट इज लेस देन वन एम एम सो इन दैट केस यू आर गिविंग अ लाइनर और अ वर्निश सो द लाइनर विच वी कैन यूज इन अमालगम इट कैन बी कैल्शियम हाइड्रोक्साइड और ग्लास एनोमसिमेट so calcium hydroxide it is used for the when the pulp it is exposed or it is near exposure so in that case you are applying a liner of calcium hydroxide and in the cases of deep preparation you are giving a gic liner so this is about the if there is like a pinpoint exposure of the pulp so in that case you give this calcium hydroxide now in composite it is not required and the last difference is about the desensitizer now what is this dentin desensitizer so it is indicated for the treatment of hypersensitivity of the exposed dentin so if your dentin it is exposed and because of that there is hypersensitivity so in that you are giving this desensitizer so the dentin desensitizer in amalgam it is 5% glutaraldehyde plus 35% 2 hydroxy ethyl meta acrylate so this is nothing but hema is not bonding so the desensitizer that you are using is glutaraldehyde plus hema over here it is sealed by the bonding system which is used so bonding is basically doing all the work of resistant retention everything in the case of composite so you have to remember that composite is nothing but you are drilling it like we are just removing whatever the caries is and then you are filling it with the material so this is nothing but the composite whereas in amalgam you have to do that extensive tooth preparation so this was all about the difference between the amalgam versus the composite tooth preparation i hope you found this video helpful then do like it do share it with your friends and do subscribe to my channel thank you so much